that cloud simulations can be really hard with complex objects like that. So stick around to the end to find out how to do that. We're gonna solve some problems here and create an awesome animation that you saw in the intro. So let's get started. Well, first I have this model. You can download that from my description or you can use your own model. I'm gonna turn on the wireframe so that you can see it. It's quads. It's a very good mesh right here. So I have two objects here. One is the zipper and the final mesh. But right now, let's go to the edit mode on this one. Turn off the wireframe. And right here is I'm gonna hit L on this to just select the body right there. Because I want to simulate the cloth only on this part. Then we're gonna connect these objects to it. Because we cannot run cloth simulations on a geometry like this. So we just have to find another way around. If you have another mesh, just get the very basic form of your mesh. Make sure to merge everything by distance so that it's all in one piece so the cloth is not falling apart while simulating. I'm gonna select that with L. I have one piece. Then I'm gonna hit P and separate by selection. Now right here, let's select our mesh. M to move it to a new collection so that we can hide it. Name it to hide and hit OK. Now I'm gonna make it a low poly simulation mesh and we're gonna run the whole simulation on this mesh. Let me turn on the colors so that we can see everything clearly. And now what I want to do is just perfect the whole simulation of this. Then we're going to connect zippers and stuff like that to it. So it doesn't matter if you have other geometry like uh, pockets, stuff like that on here. It will work with that too. But you just have to take care of the cloud simulation and the parenting later. But let's go with the cloud simulation first. I'm gonna hide this collection because we don't need it right now. And you can see how the mesh looks like. Let's go to the physics tab and give it a cloud simulation. Now these settings are fine. And I'm gonna come down here to the cache. It's fine. Let's go to the collisions. Now make this quality to 3 and the distance can be 0.003. Control C to copy that and by hovering over it and turn on self collisions and paste the value right here. So it's also 0.003 meters. Scroll down. Now I don't want gravity so I'm gonna turn that off by making it 0. And I think that's it for the cloth settings. But now we have to play around with the force field to make it right. I've tried to make it with geometry nodes, but it just didn't work. Now let's use the force fields to make it work. First, let's shift A and add in a turbulence force. Now I'm gonna go to the physics properties for the turbulence and make the strength something like 1000. And if it doesn't work for you, you can try different values until it works. So the size, let's make it one. I don't know much about these values, but I've tried these and it worked for me, at least for my scale of the object. But sometimes if you're having issue with the cloth, like if it's shrinking down or doing some weird stuff, you just have to select the object and scale it in the edit mode or just scale it right here, but apply the scale later. It will make sure the simulation works perfectly fine. So now let's bring up the flow to something like 3.4, the noise amount can be something like 4. Now let's duplicate the same object by Z axis right there. I'm gonna change the type to force and let's make it 200. Uh, let's make this 2.3 or something. Just give it some random values that are not too high. It's time to try the simulation and see if it works or not. So I'm gonna hit bake on that. But before you do bake, keep in mind you have to save the file in case it crashes so you have the progress already there. Now our bake is done, so let's play and see how it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. If I turn off the cavity, which looks a bit weird, the simulation looks perfectly fine and it's ready to be used with the original mesh. Now how can we connect all these vertices that are near to the surface of our low poly mesh and make this move realistically with that cloud simulation. So here's a very simple and very nice way of doing that. I'm gonna select that mesh, add modifier, then we're gonna add in a surface deform modifier. And I think it always works, I use it a lot. In the target, we're gonna select our low poly simulation mesh and let's hit bind. Now if I play this, you can see how this looks like. It's already looking pretty good. Now, let's get our zipper object and do the same for this one too. 
So I think I did it before, so I'm gonna remove it real quick. Let's add in a surface deform modifier, select the low poly simulation mesh and just click bind. But make sure when you are clicking bind, the frame should be set on one so that it's in our initial stage and it's not away from the edges right here. So let's hit bind. Now if I play it all, you can see how this looks like. Let's go back. But I think the simulation can be a lot more improved. So I'm just gonna turn that off and off, uh, turn on our simulation mesh again. But if you have objects on here, like uh, buttons or stuff like that, you might want to do this a little bit differently. Like if I'm gonna add a cylinder right here, let's turn on our original mesh and hide these ones. Let's move it over here, hide that. Now I'm gonna select this one first, then I'm gonna go to the original mesh, hit tab and hit one. So I'm gonna select three nearby vertices to this one. Select that one and this one too. I'm gonna hit Control P and make vertex parent. Now what that's gonna do is it will follow these three vertices all the time and rotate accordingly to that. And if I play this, look at that. Just spend some time on that. You can solve all these problems. And if you still can't figure out some stuff, you can join our Discord and we'll be happy to help you there. The links are gonna be in the description box. Now that's not the whole tutorial we have some texturing and this very awesome puff material that i think nobody's ever talked about it's a very cool setup that i've made so let me show you how i made that now first let's uh, solidify our object so we have this object which is the final mesh i'm gonna add in a solidify modifier on this but we don't want to solidify the zipper right here if i play with this you can see the zipper is affected by that so let's hit tab, hit L on this, go to vertex groups, create a new one, name it solidify, enter and assign that right here. And I'm gonna go to the modifier and select the solidify. And we have this right there. Now you can make it go back and forth just like that. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now I want to separate this area, the inner part of this, geometry nodes from there and leave that one. So we have one material on this one and the second one right here. So to do that, we have a very easy attribute right here in our solidify modifier. We can just create a new vertex group right here, name it the inside, and then go to our solidify. In the output vertex groups, select the inside group. It will transfer the inside vertices to that group. Then we can use it in geometry nodes. I'm gonna add in a geometry node setup on that. Let's go to geometry nodes, create a new one, which is gonna be the puff inside. I don't know what you call it, but I call it that. And now let's add in a separate geometry node. Now in this geometry, we have this zipper, all these little objects, these one right here. So first we want to remove them. Let's add in a mesh island node. Basically what mesh island is, if you go to the edit mode and you hit L on something, that's one mesh island. So in geometry nodes, you can select them by the index of those islands. So if the index is equal to this selection, I'm going to set it to face. If the index is equal to 22, our mesh will be separated and no other objects will be there. So that's a good thing. Now let's separate it again because now we want to exclude the outer part of this and select the inner. So for that, let's add in a named attribute. Because we just saved a vertex group from right here so let's get the inside vertex group from there connect that to the selection and what do we have now i'm going to get a join geometry to join everything back right here now get the inverted one connect it here and get the inverted one from right here too and connect it now i'm going to get a set position node and connected to the selection right there before it goes to the join geometry. Let's add in a subdivide mesh node and just leave that on one for now because it might slow down your computer. Then you can bring it up for the render. So let's add in a vector math. We always need those and make it scale. This can be normal. 
connect that to the offset. Now let's add in a math mode, set this to multiply. This is going to be 1.3 1 or something and connect that to the scale. Now let's add in a noise texture and yeah, I think it's going to be a Verona of texture which works pretty good. I'm going to make it distance to edge. Let's add in a color ramp. Now let's preview that and see how it looks like. Come on. If I preview it, you can see how this looks like. I'm going to make it something like 13 or 14 and connect that to the first value right there. Let's make this subdivide mesh to 2. Now if you look at these edges, they look very bad. So for that, I'm going to add in a named attribute node. Just go to the vertex groups and right here, select the edges and make the effect a little bit smoother. So right here, I'm just going to select those edges. This is going to be hard, but yeah, got it. Make sure you don't select any other vertices because it can create problems in the end result. Here, let's create another vertex group, make it the edges, assign that, and I'm going to select that edges in here, get a color ramp, duplicate the scale node and connect the color to the scale. Now it's inverted, so I'm going to click right here and flip color ramp and make it ease. Is that working? Let's add an emerge by distance as well right here. But what if you want to play the animation in the viewport and now you cannot play it because this is a lot of geometry. So for that, you just have to add in a switch node. It's this is easy way to do that. And I'm going to add in an is viewport node here. Connect the switch to that. Connect one right here. And then let's get the original geometry and connect it to the true. Connect that to the group output. Now in the viewport, it will look like that and it will play very smooth in full FPS. But in the render, it will give you the final result. So now you can mute that node if you want to see the puff and want to texture it. But I'm going to do that now. So let's make that texture about 10. That's a bit bigger, but let's make it 12 or something. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to make that a little bit right here. Make it 0.2. This is better. You can change that to whatever you like. Now, how do we texture that? Well, first, right here, let's Shift A, add in a Set Material node to give that puff a material. Now, I already have four materials for this object. First one is used for the shirt. Then I have a metal material which is used for the zippers and stuff like that right here. You can go to the edit mode and just assign those materials. And then for the puff, I have that material. Puff plus, it is used for the background layer right below the puff. Let's select the puff here. And what about puff plus? So let's get the selection, set material, and select the puff plus material right here and connect it to the joint geometry. Now you have two options here. If you're using EV for this, you don't want to do this part right here. It's just not for you. So, but if you want to use cycles, it looks really good with cycles. This is gonna be 200. Go to the light parts, make the volume to something like three or four as you like, and well, look at that. Right now it's not the best looking, but now we're gonna do some lighting and it'll look awesome. Let's just turn that on so that our viewport is fast and uh, yeah. I want to change the size of it. Let's just get geometry nodes. That's gonna be the easiest way to do that. And get a scale elements node right here. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit, then duplicate the same node, use single axis and scale it up just like that. So the lighting, which is pretty simple lighting here, you just have to add in, in area light right here, Rx 90, negative 90, grab Y axis, scale it up. I'm going to look at it right here and make it 3000. That's it. Bring that spread down a little bit. And now let's duplicate the same light on the Y axis. R X axis, gray C axis, and just fix the light right here. Remember when it moves up right there, you have to move the lights with it. So you can animate that yourself, use your own creativity so that you can create different results other than my own. So that's why I leave these things to you. Bring down the spread a little bit more, that's good enough. The power, let's make it 10,000. That's good, spread 26 or something. Make it a disc. Now, if you go to the rendered view, turn off the scene world, bring down the power, 
so because it's a lot right now all right it's taking time so i'm just gonna import my original light from my own scene so just control v on this delete this one so this is my light and i used this one this is the whole setup i turned on the use nodes on the light so we have the nodes we can use that this is how it looks like it's pretty good now let's go to compositing use nodes Control shift click so we get a viewer node here i'm gonna add in a glare node set this to glow let's add in a color balance node you get a little bit of balancing here i'm gonna bring that a little bit down make it bluish and it's just a value for making it a little bit cool right you can also make it warmer by make bringing that back here i'm gonna bring that up a little bit and that's it f12 and render that but look at that it looks awesome the fabric and stuff looks very premium with my own version i had a plane right here with a gradient texture it's a little bit of noise and gradient this is the texture that i used here and i just put it in the back background right here and place it in the right spot and just parent it to the camera now if you render that see how that looks like now let's change the color and see if uh, we get any better colors here. Now let's try this one. Let's scale that up a little bit. I'm gonna try that one out there. Now make sure to turn off the render visibility and the viewport visibility for your low poly simulation mesh because that's gonna mess up things. And if you want to study this file and download it and you don't want to make it from scratch, you can just download that file from my Patreon, which will also help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.